is up, you beautiful human? I'm so happy to have you here with me today. Today we are talking all about yin and yang, feminine and masculine energy, and specifically how we can tap into that feminine yin energy. So yin and yang, it represents this duality, this balance, right? You cannot have the light without first experiencing the darkness. You can't have the happiness without the sadness. You can't have the good without the bad. You can't have the feminine without the masculine. We all as humans contain feminine and masculine energy. It doesn't matter what gender you are. We all contain both of these in our bodies, in ourselves. And oftentimes when we feel off, when we feel stressed, when we feel anxious, sometimes when we feel pain, this is a really good way our body is reminding us and telling us that we are out of balance. We either are creating or experiencing too much yin or yang energy in our everyday lives. Today we are focusing on how to cultivate and create more yin energy in our lives. Tapping into that femininity, tapping into the intuition, to the divinity, to our power. This is something that I've been dealing with very deeply the past few months, but more on that later, we have to start with our 10 second dance break. In line with today's video, we are gonna tap into that feminine, sensual, relaxed, slow self. So when you're moving your body today, instead of jumping up and down and trying to raise your energy, I want you to focus on grounding yourself, centering yourself, tapping into the power that's within you. Y'all ready? Let's go. to tap into this yin energy today is slow down and trust. We're gonna breeze through six concrete ways that we can tap into this feminine energy. We're gonna start off strong, y'all. Number one is to trust yourself. I don't know about you, but I used to look for a lot of approval in other people. We wanna be accepted and liked, right? And this is natural, this is normal. It's very primal. If you think back to hunter-gatherer times, we needed our tribe. If we were pushed out of our tribe, our lives were literally in danger. But looking for your self-worth and validation from others can be a very vicious cycle. So I've been on this big journey of tapping into more feminine sides of me lately because what I realized is that I brought a lot of masculine energy into my everyday life. I really enjoy weightlifting. That's very yang energy. I, I'm always on the go. I don't like slowing down and I put a lot of pressure on myself to slow down. So lately I've been on this big journey of how can I slow down? How can I trust myself? How can I find more balance between yin and yang in my life? So I had this conversation with my mom the other day. I called her up because I'm contemplating stepping out of a current job that I hold because it just doesn't feel like it's right for me anymore. And I've been dealing a lot with trusting my intuition, leaning into my intuition, and it just doesn't feel right for me anymore. And so what she lovingly pointed out to me when I called her is I was looking for validation. I was looking for her to tell me that Hannah, it's okay to leave this job if that's what feels right for you. I was looking for some sort of validation from her. This was a really interesting reminder for me, kind of like, you know, a slap in the face, like Hannah, you can trust yourself. If you feel like this is the right decision for you, you don't need your mom, your partner, your best friend, whoever, to tell you that it's the right decision for you. You are the only one that knows how you feel. So that's where this vicious cycle of looking for validation in others really stems from. Whoever we are seeking external validation from, they're not on in our body. They don't they don't feel what we feel. They don't know what our intuition is telling us. So really someone can help you process and come to some conclusions and really dig deep and center yourself. Some people can help you do that. And that's why it's so important to have a tribe, right? And have a community 
But at the end of the day, I really invite you to find ways that you can lean in and trust yourself because your body, your intuition really does know best. And the more that you are able to lean in and trust yourself and affirm yourself and validate yourself, the stronger that intuition is gonna get. One of the best ways to do this is number two, and that is to slow down. We fill our days with so much noise, so much distraction, music, social media, our phones, talking to friends, work, family. It can all be good stuff, but if we're not able to step away and quiet our minds, quiet our bodies, then we lose connection with ourselves. So get off your phone, turn off the TV, get quiet. Some really great ways to raise and balance that yin energy is to slow down and be quiet. You can journal, you can meditate, one of my favorite things to do in the morning is just sit on the couch with my cup of coffee and look at my plants, look at my cats, just sit in the quiet, nothing else going on. You can do a little walking meditation. We talked about that in last week's video. If you wanna watch it, it's right here. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just take 10, 20 minutes for yourself. Number three is to move the body in a slow and restorative way. So I really enjoy weightlifting. That's something that I find a lot of power and strength and validation in, but that is very yang energy. So recently, I've been on this journey of really taking control of a yoga practice and my meditation practice. Since I was in college, I've really always meditated on and off and I have a pretty good grasp on that and I feel good about that. But something that I've always enjoyed doing but had a lot of mental blocks with is yoga. Yoga is such a powerful way to slow down but also to move our bodies and to tap into ourselves on a physical level and a spiritual level really so find some really great yin yoga videos i'll link some down below for you as a place to start you could also just walk go hiking get out in nature nature has a beautiful way to help naturally balance us in just an innate way ground yourself feel your feet walking on the earth if you can take your shoes off go walk the beach go walk outside on your lawn doing slow restorative movement is just as important as doing that quick powerful weightlifting think running think things that take higher energy we need both get that false notion out of your head and i'm saying this to you as much as i'm saying it to myself we must get that false notion out of our head that we have to work out. We have to go, 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 go to be successful, to be productive, to make it through our days. I promise you, you will see better results from working out maybe three to four days a week and the other three or four days a week doing that gentle restorative movement. Number five, although it's not what you look like, clothes, scents, colors all of these can be reminders of tapping into that feminine or yin energy it can simply be a really nice tool and do what feels right for you it's not about wearing pink or putting on makeup or wearing a dress or making sure you look perfect it's about tapping into what makes you feel more feminine Something I really enjoy is tapping in through my clothing and through colors. So I'm wearing a baby doll cut top today. I'm really tapping into that inner child, that child playful side of me. And to me, that's very feminine. Although this shirt is black. Another thing I really like to do is carry around crystals. So I have this rose quartz crystal in my pocket. Sometimes I just carry it around with me. Nobody knows that it's there, but every time you feel it or you touch it, you can remind yourself, okay, I'm tapping into this feminine energy. I'm allowing this crystal, the healing properties of this specific crystal to raise my levels of femininity, my yin energy today. And number six is to take off all judgment. Again, I'm speaking directly to myself here. We are our own worst critics. It's so easy to get in our heads, to overthink, to work ourselves up. But when we are able to give ourselves grace, to extend the grace that you would extend to someone else that you love, extend that grace to yourself because you deserve it. The beauty 
difference is that the more we're able to find it, the more we're able to slow down, the easier things just flow. Great contradiction in my mind that the more that we actually slow down, pause, take time to rest, the more productive we actually are and the more easily things are able to be accomplished and produce. The best way to describe it for me is that things don't seem as forced. So if you are someone that struggles to slow down, to take time for yourself, to give yourself grace, practice some of these tips this week and just see how you feel. Let us know in the comments below what's working for you this week. What are you dealing with? What are you having trouble with this week? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.